Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. I want to share with you something that I've been working on and building up for the past couple of months now. And I realize it's something I don't tend to do on this YouTube channel too much is like share what I'm working on in the background. And I think like that's one of my biggest downfalls, honestly. Uh, getting like user feedback is I think so invaluable. And it's funny because I never do it. Uh, but I tend like to get fixated on certain things like, oh, I want to build this thing out. And then I spend a month on it and I release it and I realize nobody actually cares about it. So it's something I want to change and uh, I would love, love, love for you to try this out and let me know what you think. What have I been doing? Ed, show us. So I've been working on this intense tech start now for the past couple of months and I've been loving it. It's essentially a course platform this started off as, but like halfway through building this out, I realized that, you know, my interests have changed so much and I'm not really interested in making like boring course tutorials. like. React for beginners and uh, create an Airbnb clone and stuff like that. So it's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I want to expand and I want to provide uh, like courses that are a bit more, I guess, aligned with what I'm interested in right now. And what I'm interested in right now is, as you, you might have noticed, I've been doing a lot of like lead code type challenges, and which is coming, by the way, very soon. Next video, we're going to get into link list and recursion. It's going to be super fun. But I want to provide like more general computer science courses. And I know there's like a lot of interest in AI as well. So I'm going to be doing... Um, we're going to be doing data structures and algorithms. I want to do AI systems, like how you act, how, how to actually build out an AI system, uh, go like with the math behind it as well. I cover linear algebra, calculus, and um, probability and statistics and stuff like that. So that's the type of content that I want to create for this. But the thing I want really like, I still felt like oh, that's still not enough, uh, especially, you know, with AI out there and stuff like that. I want to like add more stuff to this. So I started building out this like CSS challenges and you might have like heard of something that's similar to this, which is CSS battles. And this is pretty cool. Uh, like you are given a challenge like this. You're given like a little code editor here as well. And then you have like the square here, right? And you're like trying to like recreate this. Uh, I thought that was cool, but I'm like, when would I ever like recreate this stuff like that? Like, I'm not ever gonna use something. What is this? Like a red, like double penis here. Uh, so, nah. So I wanted, to, I still like the idea of it to like have a website where you can go on and kind of like, you know, brush up on your CSS skills. But I actually wanted to do it with components. So this is what the CSS battle challenge is. You're actually given like nicely styled components that you can recreate. So as you can see, we have a card system here. We have this notification. I'm gonna add a bunch more. I just added like four to test out, but just go on the link down below and give it a go. Like this is like, this is still in like, preview mode, beta, even like alpha state. Uh, so you can access everything here for free. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to ask you to pay. Uh, but you have like a nav bar here as well, right? You have these cards. And I think this is like the coolest thing ever. I, I'm going to also show you a little bit of the code of how this works. But check it out. It also works with like light and dark mode. So these components are all dynamic and you can recreate them. So if I go on this one, for example, the card, as you can see, we have like a progress bar here with a pixel accuracy. I'm going to show you how I did this as well. You have the code length here and look at that here is the finished one and here is your solution but you can also go like split view like this and actually compare uh, the two solutions uh, let's head back here so if I just go down here as you can see it also extracts all the colors uh, from the finished solution which is really cool so you don't like need to second guess like what colors this uses and it also gives you like some tips and, and tricks here uh, but you can go down here and you are given the HTML solution pretty much, and then you can write out the CSS. So let me go here, add a display of flex as well. And let's let's actually change this over to a uh, background color here. There we go, color background. Uh, and let's go see. So here we go. It's a bit closer to the real solution, but not really. And as you can see, the pixel accuracy also changes there. And again, if I go into split view, you can actually like nicely compare the two results. So this is pretty cool. Um, the way I also like want to expand this before I um, show you how the code works and kind of how I put this together is Optimally, I would also want to add uh, for this to work with Tailwind CSS. So you're just given the option to pick between vanilla CSS and Tailwind. 
And another thing I want to do is add some sort of multiplayer for this, where you can create a room and then maybe have AI SDK generate a random component and then you can battle out on like a freshly made challenge. Uh, and I want to do that with like durable objects. I'm looking into how to like get all that set up. So those are like the two big features that I'm still working on right now. After I'm finished with this, the next step is I'm going to hook up uh, Cloudflare containers to do JavaScript type challenges. That's going to involve like lead code style challenges, but also challenges that kind of help you guide through learning JavaScript like that. Uh, so that's another big step that I'm going to add. So this is still like, I'm not planning on releasing this for quite a while yet uh, because there's so much that I want to add to this. Uh, but let me show you the code really quick. If you're interested, you might get an idea of maybe something different that you can do with all this stuff. Uh, I just think it's really interesting with how it works. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, let me just show you the code really quickly. Uh, essentially, what I'm doing is for the target solution and your solution, I'm rendering out an iframe for each of these. And why am I doing an iframe? Not just sending like a div with dangerously set inner HTML. Well, one of the big reasons is that styles you can still like set it with dangerously set in their HTML, but it bleeds over to the other components, which would make both of them look identical. So it's a no-go, but iframes allow you to render these out in complete isolation, which is fantastic for this use case. Another th thing is it has real like browser rendering behavior. Now, when you're doing something like this, when you're injecting something like HTML, also, I'm saving this in just like a database. Uh, you want to sanitize this. Otherwise, you can be prone to XSS attacks. So a user can essentially write a script tag, right, in the HTML, and then inject some JavaScript code, and that's no bueno. You don't want to do any of that. So you can use a, a package like DOM Purify to essentially sanitize that. This is going to remove like the on clicks. It's going to uh, remove all the fetch stuff, uh, which is fantastic. So, okay, we have the iframes, but how do we actually compare the two? Uh, let me just bring you over to this little file here, the challenge preview. So what we do is we take those two iframes and I essentially use a package called HTML to canvas. And this is exactly what the name suggests. It takes uh, your HTML and it turns it into a canvas that you can specify a width and a height on. And if you do this, I highly recommend you to try the HTML Canvas Pro rather than the other one. You're going to find two packages because HTML to Canvas Pro also allows you to use OKCLH colors, uh, which the normal one doesn't. So we're taking these two iframes, creating a canvas out of the two. And then down here, if I just head down here, I'm using another package called Pixel Match, which does exactly again what it says. It essentially allows you to check the value of each canvas and compare the pixel values and give you a, a, a accuracy rating based on those two. And since I am using like injecting Tailwind in this as well, it's great because it's dynamic. So even if I switch between light, light and dark mode, uh, it's been able to like re-render that and check the new values. And then I have a couple of like little utility functions here. This is something I'm still like figuring out, like how to actually pass Tailwind down uh, in each individual iframe. Now, like doing like the CDN stuff works. But for example, in my like CSS file, uh, I have stuff defined like color background or color primary that I just want to pass down in the iframes. So color, cur the currently I'm doing it like this with like get computed style and I'm just injecting these and some of the tailwind colors as well, but I'm looking for a better solution. So hopefully I'll have something better uh, in a week's time or so. But that's it. That's what I've been like working on. I'm really excited, uh, kind of the direction I'm taking this. Uh, again, keep an eye on it. Link is going to be in the description. And yeah, I'll do more videos as soon as I get the JavaScript challenge up as well and the multiplayer mode for this. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.